What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here and in this video we're going to be going over Moto G Power tips and tricks. So let's get started. So these are my favorite tips and tricks and hidden features about the Moto G Power. By the way, if you want to see the most up-to-date pricing for this phone, take a look at the link in the video description as I'm sure over time the price will go down. But starting with number one, and that is how to get a battery percentage in the upper right corner of the phone. So by default, there is no battery percentage, which I'm certainly not a fan of. I like to know the percentage of the battery on my phone at all times. So to do this, pull down the shade, go to the gear, so the settings. You're going to go to battery right there. And then from here, you're going to see an option that says battery percentage. So turn that on and you'll see up in the top corner, we now have the battery percentage. So it doesn't matter where you go throughout the interface, that percentage will be present. In addition to that, you should definitely spend some time checking out the various features in the battery section in the settings, as there are quite a few cool things here. First thing is, is that you can actually see the usage details. So I understand with the Moto G Power, you're typically gonna get very good battery life, so you probably won't be too concerned about this, but you can see which apps are using the majority of the power from the phone, but you can see here which apps are using the majority of the battery life on the device. And if it seems like your battery is draining abnormally quickly, you can go on here then and see which specific app is causing the problem. Then from there, if you do want to really conserve the power in the device, you can turn on battery savers. So you can do that. Now by default, the adaptive battery mode is on, so it will limit the battery usage for apps that you don't use too often. So even if you do have certain apps that are open and running in the background, the adaptive battery will make sure that they're not hogging all of your battery life if you're not using the app. And you can see other cool stats too, like the last time you had a full charge and the screen usage since the full charge. Now with the Moto G Power, there are multiple ways to take a screenshot. So I wanna show you that for this next tip. So the first way to take a screenshot is to hold down the volume down and power button. And you can see, it takes a screenshot very quickly there. You can save it or discard it. You can also edit that screenshot. We're gonna discard for now. But there's also another really cool way to take a screenshot, and that is with a gesture. So you're gonna to go to settings, you're gonna type in three, search, and you'll see right here, three finger screenshot. Tap on that, and then go to try it out. You're gonna to have to register three of your fingers. Okay, turn that on. And now, anywhere I am on the device, I just have to place my three fingers onto the phone's display. And it takes the screenshot that quickly. So that's a really cool way to take a screenshot. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. So those are two different ways to take a screenshot. Now, by default, we get gesture-based navigation with the phone. So this is very similar to how navigating around the iPhone 11 works, for example. But if you want the classic Android navigation buttons, you can get that back with the Moto G Power. So to do that, pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in nav, and you'll see right here, system navigation. So tap on that, and now you'll see that we have several different options here. So we have gesture navigation, which is what's set right now. You can, if you want to, modify that to adjust the sensitivity, but then we also have three button navigation. So let's do that, and as soon as you tap on that, you will then get the three buttons at the bottom. So you can go back, home, or go to your recent apps. And then also if you hold down on the home button, it does pull up Google Assistant there. Now that's not really a feature that I find to be too helpful. I feel like there's plenty of other ways to access Google Assistant, but definitely I know for certain people out there, maybe you're just more comfortable with using the three button navigation instead of the gestures. Here it is. So you can easily do that. Of course, if you do want to go back to the gestures, you can do that too, and you will get a bit more screen real estate so that your apps are a little bit larger. So that's one of the benefits with the gestures, but it really comes down to your personal preference about which way you want to do it. So by default, when you double press on the power key, it will pull up Google Assistant. And if you're like me, I never use Google Assistant. So you can actually make this do something a bit more useful, like starting up the camera. So to do this, pull down the shade, 
go to the settings and then search for gestures, then go to gestures. And then from here, you'll see some different options. So let me first show you how to change this button. So go to double press power key, and then you can switch it to either do nothing or launch the camera. So now, no matter where you are within the phone, if you double press on that power key, it does pull up the camera. Now, since I have both the camera and Snapchat installed, and it's kind of cool because they treat Snapchat as like its own camera, but you do have to choose which one you want. So that is kind of interesting though, because if you are someone that uses Snapchat quite a bit, then technically you can program this button so that when you double tap on it, it will pull up Snapchat. Now, ideally, I wish that Motorola would make it so that you could have any app be pulled up by double tapping on that button. But unfortunately, you have to choose from your favorite camera app. But we'll do the camera. So we'll do just once here. And you can see it does indeed pull up the camera by double tapping on that button. There are some other cool gestures here as well. So right now, if you wanted to pull down the shade, you have to take your finger and then pull down from the top. But if you want to, you can turn on swipe fingerprint for notifications. And when you do that, all you have to do is just run your finger across the fingerprint sensor and it will pull down the shade. So that's a quick way to check out all of your various notifications without having to really reposition your hand or anything. We already talked about system navigation with the gestures or three buttons. So that's another cool thing, of course. We already talked about three finger screenshot. Now there is the fast flashlight. This is really interesting. Make sure this is on. It's actually on by default, but you might not be aware of it. But essentially, if you run the phone in a chopping motion, it will turn on the flashlight. So let me do that right now. And you can see the flashlight is now on and then we can turn it off in the same way. And now it's off. So that's really cool. We also have quick capture. So another cool way to open up the camera pretty quickly. That's also on by default, but essentially you just have to flip the phone around like that and then it will pull up the camera. And again, I don't really have it set to a default app right now because I wanted to show you this for demonstration sakes but you can choose to have it open up Snapchat or the regular camera app. Or I suppose if you were to install a third party camera app, then you could also do it that way too. And then we also have swipe to shrink. This is really cool as well. Since the phone does have a very large display at 6.4 inches, you can't really reach certain parts of the display just by using the phone with your hand in one position. So by turning on swipe to shrink, essentially you just pull down from the middle of the display and it will shrink the entire display just like this. And then from there, you can just navigate around the phone as you, whoops, as you normally would. So it's like a mini phone here. And then when you are ready to make the phone back into its original size, just pull down the shade and then restore. So once you restore it, things are back to normal and then you're good to go. And then if you want to go back to that, just do the same process again, swipe from the middle and you're back to this smaller display here. But this definitely makes the phone a lot easier to use which is fantastic. So if you're looking for a quick way to put the phone in do not disturb mode, then I've got you covered. So this feature is called flip to do not disturb. You're gonna access this by pulling down the shade, going to the settings, going to search, and then type in flip four, and then you'll see right here flip four D and D. You're gonna turn that on. And now when you put the phone face down, it's gonna put it into do not disturb mode. And then when you pick up the phone again, it's going to put it back into the normal mode. So maybe you're getting into a meeting and you want to quickly put your phone into do not disturb. All you got to do, is just put your phone face flat and you're good to go. And then when you're done, pick it up and you're good to go as well. So I'm a big fan of the keyboard that comes pre-installed onto the phone. But one annoying part about it is that the top line of letters here is mixed in with the numbers. And if you want to access dedicated number keys, you got to go down into the corner to get those. But if you want to have a dedicated row of number keys by default, just go to the gear here and then you're going to go to preferences and then you'll see right there number row. So turn that on. And also there's a lot of other keyboard settings and preferences. So I recommend that you explore this and see what all there is for you. But now when you go back, you'll see that you have a dedicated number row. So that's very convenient. So by default, the display turns off pretty quickly if you're not touching or using the phone. So if you do want to extend that time or maybe even shorten it for whatever reason, then I recommend you at least 
kind of testing it out, changing things to fit your needs. But go to the settings, go to display, go to advanced, and then you're gonna see here screen timeout. So by default, I believe it's set at 30 seconds, but you can go from 15 seconds all the way to 30 minutes. So I have it at 30 minutes because I've been doing a lot of stuff with this phone since I've been covering it here on the channel. But considering that the battery is so large on the phone, you should just do 10 or 30 minutes. See how that is for you. But that will stop the phone from immediately going into sleep mode. Now, if you're not too familiar with Motorola's interface, there's actually a secret menu that you have to access by holding your finger down onto the display. Now, you probably already know the wallpaper and widgets. You can change that however you want. But there's also the home settings. So the home settings gives you different ways to change the launcher. So for example, if you want app suggestions turned off, you can turn that off. If you want to turn off the notification dots that appear on top of the various apps when there's a notification, you can turn that off as well, or you can turn it off for specific applications. Now by default, when you install a new app, it will immediately go onto the home screen. But if you want it to just stay in your app drawer, and not necessarily be automatically placed onto your home screen, you can turn that off. I'm personally gonna leave that off because I like to arrange my home screen the way that I wanna arrange it. I don't want the phone to automatically put apps on the home screen. You can also allow the home screen to be rotated when the phone is rotated, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> kind of strange here, but maybe you have this phone mounted on your dashboard horizontally then definitely having the ability to use the phone in this landscape format, even on the home screen, can certainly be helpful. You can adjust whether or not you want the Google feed to show up if you swipe all the way to the left. You can also adjust the home screen layout with different amounts of apps being present on your home screen. So those are some cool home screen settings that you might not be aware of. But I hope you enjoyed this tips and tricks video about the Moto G Power. So hopefully these various hidden features were helpful to you and you learned something from this video. Now, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you do wanna learn more about this product, then take a look at the link in the video description, but make sure to sub to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Take care and have a fantastic day.